Richard and I met 15 years ago, and yeah. um, it was at a at the beach at a party, and there was a big party going on. There was a, a bunch of drunk people, and there was a guy in the middle, drunk with no shirt on, yeah, yeah, yeah. sunburned. And, was that Richard? Yeah. <laughs> smelled, like, smelled like fish. I didn't and, know, Pastor. And I told my sister, I was like, who is that redneck? You know, like, yeah. he, he's got to go. He has a drinking problem. And... Um, <laughs> Wasn't a drink, it was a stopping problem. Was a yeah, stopping problem. <laughs> turns out he's stopping. And so we just, that's kind of how it started. We said that we would never get married. We pinky promised. We perpetrated on our first date that we'd always lied and brought our A game, you know, didn't tell each other the truth or anything. No, because we actually thought that marriage ruins people. We thought that marriage destroys families uh, because we came from divorce. And we knew that the pain that we lived in uh, in the in that divorce state, so we just pinky promised that we would never get married, so that you know we could be safe, and she keep her half of the stuff, and I'd keep my half of the stuff, and we were already and starting we, this relationship we like that. Only knew each other two weeks. We moved in together. Yeah, and, that's um, always a good idea. Yeah, and so we always say it's BC. You know, people are like before Christ, like no before commitment. You know, so uh, we moved in together. I fought like crazy. Had problems with. Drugs, alcohol, pornography. Just everything's uh, falling apart. Everything's basically falling apart. We're a blended family. Uh, we, I'd been married twice before. What? <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? Let me tell you something. Right now, I was like, what? Like, you know, okay, so, so all this is going yeah. on, right? And so I didn't, you know, we didn't want to get married, but we uh, went to a service at, at Lakewood Church, and Pastor Joel was talking about living together, and he said if she's good enough to live with, she's good enough to marry. So that's how we got, you know, how he proposed to me sitting in the sanctuary. Really? Yeah, I, I, guess, we got I got, guess we got planning to do. That's yeah, what yeah. he said. That was it. Yeah, very, that was your proposal. Very that romantic. Was it. Very romantic. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah, at Lakewood. But hey, at least yeah. it was at Lakewood. Hey. Come on. You know, and so we did. We thought if we got married, gave our heart to Christ. I had recommitted. Richard gave his heart to Jesus, and we just thought our life was going to just be great after that. And it just seemed like it got even worse like we got married and then things just got spiraled harder yeah yeah, yeah. so I, what happens then well i think that we give do a disservice to people when we tell them about christ and we think that you know oh come to christ your life's going to be great and all that but we're still going to have trials and tribulations we're still going to go through some stuff yeah and so we didn't know that that we were going to go through and we didn't even know what god had um planned for us but the devil was really trying to take us out not yeah. even take us down but take us out yeah, yeah, so right now, so you're you're in church. We're in church, uh, and, we're and, we're, still... and we're playing church. You're, you're playing church. Yeah. Oh, okay, so yeah. that's a possibility. You yeah. could be in church and yeah. be playing oh, church. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, okay. You had that church mask on. You got the church mask on. Yeah, you're in there. Marriage is not getting any better. We would fight all the way to church. I mean, we would smoke two cigarettes on the way. We called it just two-cigarette ride. Smoke two cigarettes on the way to church. Blowing smoke. <laughs> you know, kids are in the back seat blowing smoke rings, and they didn't have cigarettes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'd get to the church doors, and then I would threaten him with his life like do not embarrass me yeah, so but as soon as she walked through the door like you know the holy ghost would come upon her and <laughs> she, she was oh sister how are you oh, yeah. jesus is king blessed you yeah, yeah, yeah. favor <laughs> like, ain't fair. Oh, my God. Favor ain't fair and i'd reach yeah. over I'm like oh she forgave me because she's all happy so i'd reach over to hold her hand Oh, and then you'd pull it right. away. So you're still in the same, it was just that church mask. Yeah, she would say, and don't, would okay. After church, it's on, right where we left off. Like, mm -mm. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I stayed for altar call that day. <laughs> yeah. And I, I stayed for the Spanish service, too. And, no hable español un poquito. You know, and uh, yeah, we just, that was our life. That was our life. And so we started volunteering at church. And, and um because we heard the pastor say, you know, if you if you're hurting, go help people, go hurt, help other people. Give it away, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And so we did, and so we were helping all these people, and then we got in the marriage ministry. We volunteered, and people's marriages were getting better, and they but were. But yours wasn't. Ours wasn't because we weren't doing it. You're kidding it. me. Mm -hmm. we were so basically, you were giving ad yeah. <laughs> you were giving great yeah. advice, we and just weren't taking it yourself. We were telling them what to do, and then sure, they were, it was great. But we would go home and have a double life. Wow. And so the like, first five years of our marriage. Uh, right in the beginning, um, I mean, we were about a year into it, and, and her father got sick and passed away. Her mother got sick and passed away. A sister got sick and passed away. Another si sister got sick and passed away. Her brother got sick and passed uh, away. Our niece died. My best yeah. friend OD'd. Um, I mean, it was just all these things in a five-year period where it wow. was just, yeah, yeah it, was, it should have taken us down. So, okay, so you're in church. All of this is going on. When is the moment when you guys... Uh, I mean, does, how long does this go for? Uh, it went on for a few years, and we had a, a word that we used. It was unbelievable. So if anyone asked us what, what was going on, or, you know, how, how are things, we'd say, unbelievable. 
<laughs> so that was your word. <laughs> that, was yeah, word. that was your that was your your Christian that was word. Our go to word. That was our word. Yeah, because yeah. All how you say it. How's everything? If we'd say, oh, it's unbelievable. Well, everybody would scatter. But if people come up, well, how's everything? It is unbelievable. Like, I know, right? And they're all happy. <laughs> oh, so, my God. Kind of late, yeah, like Pastor Joel's you know? our pastors, and we don't want to be, you know. Yeah, so yeah, we're, hope. We smile. Yeah, come we on. Hope. And so we just kept, but, you know, that hope is what got us through. We just kept believing. We would hear, um, you know, that uh, there's going to be trials and tribulations, but to be of good cheer. And so we just kept putting on that face and getting up every day, and sometimes we were duking it out. Not literally duking it out, but, but I mean, kicking holes in walls and leaving. Yeah, because there's also a story, right, where, Something, what was it that somebody nailed a, a door shut? Oh, or, you've done your homework. <laughs> come on. Hey, I have to find out about you guys, okay, right? So. so this is to give people hope okay. that we can make it, anybody can make it. <laughs> there was a time, our fights were so bad. One night, um, we both went out. We were mad. He took off. I was following him on the freeway. I knew he was going out, and he was drinking, and, and he had the music going, and he, was, he didn't know I was behind him on the freeway. So we're, I'm driving, trying to catch him, you know, see where he's going to go. Yeah. And finally, he spotted me. He drove off, drove me off the road, and so I ended up on the Esplanade. And then a few hours later, we both came back to the house. He came back first, and I tried to get into the house, and he had the, I, the electricity was off, so I couldn't use the garage door opener. So I thought that's strange, and so I went around the back, and he had barricaded the back door with furniture, <laughs> and he had screwed the front door shut with a drill. Wow! So you couldn't get back in. Could not get back in. You screwed the front. Wow! Yeah. Right. So with all this going on. <laughs> You know, the screen, yes. right? Because there, the there's people, people are out there. That are, it was <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. There's people still using that. Yeah. You know, so we would think that with all of this, we could actually say that the Bible scripture that says his grace is sufficient is actual. Yeah. Right? Because you guys are going and, but you're not breaking, you're not breaking up. No. You're breaking no. things, but well, you're not breaking I, up. I was embarrassed. I mean, I had been married twice before, and here we're mar I'm married again, and pretty sure I was at my legal limit in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to waste one. So, uh, and so we, I, I didn't want, to, I was embarrassed, and I didn't want to, to fail. And so we just kept trying, and we kept going, and we kept going to church, and we kept going every Sunday. We kept going to anything the church had, we were there. We were, anytime the doors were open, we just kept going. So God was working. He was yeah. working. You just weren't seeing it manifest right, oh, right away, right? Because sometimes we think we walk in through the door, the fairy dust hits, and boom, everything changes. Yeah. But the reality is that there's a process to all of this. You guys are going consistent, though, right, yeah. during this time. We never, we never, um, that was just what we did, whether, no matter what. Even if we had partied two or three days straight, we would still go to church on Sunday. Come on. That was part of the party. That's part yeah. of the You're deal. like, we're going to party. Yeah, and then we're going to repent. <laughs> <laughs> then you're going to go repent. That's how she got me to go to church. That's how she got. I, I didn't grow up in church. Yeah. Right? So I was raised Catholic, and then at the age of 10, my father said, you could do whatever you want. You're a man now at 10. And I said, well, I'll do what you do, and I'll just stay home. So yeah. from that point on, I just never went back to church. Wow. So when she was wanting to go to church, I'm like, nah, well, so I'm like, okay, but like every three months, right? We don't have to go like every Sunday, right? You know? And then <laughs> so when he found out there was a Wednesday night service and a Sunday night service and, and a Monday night Bible classes, class. And and, like, what? But you know what? He went, he went <laughs> kicking and screaming, but he, he went. And the one thing I have to say that probably the best trait that Richard has and has had that got us through this was that he was very teachable. He's wow. always been open and teachable. Even That's in really the worst good. times, us yelling, screaming, locking, screwing uh, the I door just, shut. Pastor, I got to a point in my life, I did not want to live that life anymore. And I didn't know how to have a different life. I didn't know how to have a life that wasn't full of destruction and yeah. chaos. Yeah. Uh, but it seemed like I didn't know if these people in church were faking it or if they were real. They were holding hands and they were hugging and they were kissing and they were laughing. And I would tell Sherry, they're just faking it. Oh, they're we, they're unbelievable. We right? They're using unbelievable. We would, we would laugh at them. We were just like, please. That's not real. Like, that's that's not not real. real. Nobody's you like know? that. Nobody's you know? like that. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. We know you, you just came from the party, like too. That. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what is the moment? They're faking it better than we are. Yeah, yeah. You know, they use a different word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think for us, it wasn't just... Um, some people get delivered, you know, and bless their heart. Yeah. They just have a poof moment yep. and their life goes yep. on. But it wasn't like that for us. It's just been a process. It's been a constant process. It's been a every time we get one step forward, we go two steps back, yeah. you know. And even now, it's still a process. We're still working through it. I don't know that you ever arrive. So did you ever have, like, the moment where well, things had, just really yeah, started? I had, I had a moment that said I didn't want to party anymore. And I had an encounter, and I said, I think it was with the devil, but he it was basically telling me, come on, come on, just a little bit more. You're, you're almost there. Like he was just going to pull me over to the dark side, like forever. Wow. 
And oh, I, I, I told Richard, Richard had fallen asleep, and I was telling him all about it, and he was like, yeah, I think you're hallucinating. <laughs> um, but it scared me so bad. And I knew right then God was just like, but come on this way. You know, you, either you go this way or this way. And um, I don't know. It was just that moment. And then little by little, it's just been a process trying to... Um, you know, and, and I want to be perfectly clear about that. I believe that it's, it's a healing until God calls us home. I don't think, I know we get healed, but even if you have surgery, you're going to have a scar. Right. And it feels funny. Yeah. Um, and you're able to go back and touch it later, but at the very beginning, it hurts. It's painful. Tender. You know, it's tender. And, and so there's times that we'll talk and, you know, she'll say something or I'll do something, and it's a trigger from back in our childhood or from a previous relationship and we're right back there again but then we recognize oh, wait a minute you know we belong to God and this is not how we're supposed to act well and I think when it got better with us was when because I used to just shame Richard and yell at him and get up in his face I'm not proud of it but I mean just I didn't I was so you? frustrated <laughs> <laughs> and so I would call him names and I would just tell him how God was disappointed and how he was disappointing wow. his family um, but then one day I just kept listening to different pastors and they would say you know speak you know call those things that are not as if they were and speak out what you know the, there's power in the tongue and yeah. so I just started speaking out to him what I wanted to see even though so it was not what was in the natural at all. Wow. Um, and we got real with each other because I used to get so mad about pornography and drugs and we would just argue about everything. And when I just said, I don't, I don't understand it. I feel like I'm a victim, but I feel like you must be a victim from all this happening to you. So let's put our guard, let's take off our gloves and let's just talk. And when we started talking and I mean, prayer, we've been, we were praying, but when we really started praying and talking and getting so raw and so real with each other, that it became so much power. And it wasn't. A ha it wasn't always a happy talk. It yeah. wasn't where no. we were just, you know, hey, let's talk about that. Whenever she wanted to talk about the issues with pornography, I would just, I'd want to shut her down. I'd, I'd, I didn't want to talk about it because yeah. it was, I was ashamed. It was embarrassing. Sure. And you know, we're going to church, and you know, we shouldn't be like this anymore. You know, we're Christians, uh, but it was just that process. And I realized that, man, I'd walked 39 years one way, and it was going to take a little bit of time to walk back out. Yeah. You know? Uh, That's good. Through the grace of God mm -hmm. and um, having prayer in our life and just doing the things that other people were doing um, that, were, that were calling themselves Christians. And I said, well, you know what? They're not crazy. This is, this is actually working. God is truly what he says he is. And yeah. if we are fighting, if the enemy's fighting us this hard, yeah. man, what, do, what, must have what favor God and blessing does God have for us that the enemy's trying to keep it from us? And that's us, what happened. You know? We still got the vision. That's, that's unbelievable. Got that vision. Like, and so what do you guys now, now that you guys have, you know, your, your marriage has transpired, right? It's went from, you know, there's a message there, right? What is your message? Like, you guys now are traveling around, doing a, a marriage conferences, right? You're with Jimmy Evans on cruises, and you just... Did, like we were saying, uh, spark like Lakewood, and you know, what does well, that you know, feel like? I, Isn't that surreal? You're so, sitting one yeah. time, you're so wanting crazy. to beat him up. Now you're talking on well, that stage. We were talking on uh, on Saturday at the conference about how we haven't always looked this shiny. You know, yeah. I mean, there was a time it was really dark, and but God gave us a vision of our by volunteering and helping and and just keeping on going to church every Sunday. Little by little, we started telling our story, and bad decisions make funny stories. Yeah, we yeah. Start laughing at it, and then all of a sudden, we comedy. It was breaking down walls, and and then all, all of a sudden now we're getting to do stand-up you know, comedy. We approached it one time trying to be, you know, reading out of the Bible and quoting scripture. And I mean, people being were real. falling asleep. And so, you know, <laughs> we just... So you decided to do a little comedy. Real. We just what is something you usually real. say on one of your comedy things? What is something, well, you know... Well, like we have cultural differences, you know, because my family's Caucasian. And so I always say, you know, my family's Caucasian. They're very uptight. Call them tidy whities Tidy whities tidy -whities. <laughs> That's his name for him. And, and his family... My family schedules things. They don't just show up. They're very... Like, they make their bed every day. Everything is very orderly. And in Richard's yeah. family, well, he's Hispanic. And so yeah, yeah. Oh, baby, we're just straight up Mexican. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, my mama, she'll, she'll just knock on the door. Mijito, open the door. It's your mother. You know? <laughs> yes. We have one of those opaque glasses she's looking through. Like, oh, so we're like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, and so we do. We talk about that. We talk about our differences. We just, we laugh, so at, good. laugh at the stuff. So you laugh at break it. Break down walls for people to be That's able to good. talk about stuff that, that normally they might not be able to talk about. I mean, we can laugh and we make jokes about pornography, not in a funny way, but just a... Uh, Letting people know that, yeah, it doesn't hurt now. Yeah, because it's something you talk about, the sensual touches or something like that, yeah, right? What is that about? Sensual touches, yeah. We always, yeah. I always say, don't, um, women need seven non sexual touches a day. And know? this is something you teach, right? Yeah, uh -huh. you know, and, and so 
you know, just give them a little squeeze or a little love pat or something, yeah. you on know, the and, and then walk on the away. Shoulder. Yeah, don't, don't touch anything else. Like, you just walk away. After, you know? you know, a shoulder touch and gone. Gone. Right? Because when I met Richard, he was like, it was like playing dodgeball. Every time I saw him, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, my gosh, here he comes again. You know, and I, I'm like, Mr. Grabby, constantly. <laughs> oh we didn't know. <laughs> That's so funny. You guys are amazing. And so what is, you know, like, what is a tip you can uh, tell a marriage couple that's going through something out there right now? Like, what is something, like, you could share with them that will help a marriage, right? Oh, yeah, I'm sure we both have something. Not to give up. Do not give up. There was a time about year six that we were going to get divorced. We were trying to file for divorce. Yeah. But we had friends that said, you know, you can't. She's a good woman. She's a proverb. And you guys can work this out. So we, we didn't give up. And I look back now, and if we would have quit, Pastor Juan, if we would have gotten Come divorced, on. We'd have never seen any of the favor or the blessing, none of it, none of this. We wouldn't be here right now, and so. We so it gets better. Oh and man, come on, you know, we're so not much better. The most talented. We're not the funniest. We're not the, but we're, we just didn't give up. We just kept on keeping on, kept on, kept on. And I mean, our house flooded last year from Harvey. We haven't. Been, we just got back home. Like wow. we've been gone for a year. Wow. But, you know, we didn't stop our life. We still went on two cruises. We've been doing all these marriage con. At first, I thought, Richard, we can't do this. Like, oh, we have to just sit and cry. He's like, no, we're going to wow. get out there and we're going to go. So I want you to do me a favor. I want you to look at that camera. There's a marriage out there. we got less than a minute. And what I want you to do is I want you to uh, pray a prayer for a couple that's out there. Father God, we just thank you right now, Father, that there's somebody listening, Father, that this message was for them, Father. We know that the Holy Spirit, Father, moves through people, Father, and moves through marriage, Father. Marriage is, is sanctified, Father, and it's holy. And Father, we just know that there's somebody out there, Father, that needs to hear this message, Father, of transparency, of being real, Father, and that they're going to share some deep, dark secrets and some pain that they're struggling with right now, Father. And it's going to set them free, Father. And they're going to be able to come to you, Father, with, with open hearts, Father, with nothing held back, Father, with pure hearts, Father, that you're going to be able to minister to them, Father, and the Holy Spirit is going to be able to heal their heart, Father, and heal their marriage, Father, in the sweet and saving name of Jesus. Amen.